People give a lot of reasons as to why they don't exercise. And I think most of those reasons are excuses as to why they don't exercise. And I want to talk today about the most common excuses that I find for people not training. The first one, and it can be a problem, is time. So people haven't got the time to train, they haven't got time to exercise. Well, the first thing I want to look at is, is that even true? Because I know a lot of people that train and have busy lives, kids, families, and still manage to fit in that two, three hours a week to train. The people that don't train and, and claim they don't have time, they still seem to have time to talk to me about all the box sets they've watched, all the time they spent down the pub, all the other stuff that they've done, the unproductive stuff, but yet they haven't managed to squeeze in just a few hours a week to actually exercise and get themselves healthy, which is gonna have them massive benefit for the, the whole of their lives. I think you need to look at the time you spend on social media. So how much time have you just spent staring at a screen on social media, on Instagram, Facebook? We're all guilty of that. We're all guilty of sort of getting addicted to this screen and scrolling down and next thing you know, you look and there's 20 minutes gone and what have you done? You've just watched 18 cat videos. Um, so have a look at whether you are, first of all, spending your time productively. So whether you are too busy to, to train, which for most people is doubtful. Um, the second thing is you may be too busy and may not have time or the family situation might not allow you to get to the gym, but that doesn't mean you can't do some training at home. And that comes to the second excuse, which is often cost. People can't afford to come to the gym or join a gym or do a fitness class or join CrossFit or do personal training, all of those elements. And that's definitely not an excuse because there's loads and loads of free content online. I know some of it is quite poor. You have to be selective and find the stuff that's decent, but you can't really go wrong just trying to do the basics, trying to do basic movement, trying to do basic exercise, and you can get a perfectly good workout in your living room, or if you've got kids, taking the kids out and doing something with the kids, playing with them. Um, there's loads of stuff that you can do for free, you can do at home, and it doesn't have to be a prescribed one hour workout. I know that every fitness class, every personal training session is one hour long because it's a, a nice round number, it's convenient to fit in the schedule, but an hour workout isn't required to have good exercise. You can do a great workout in 10, 20 minutes, anything that's just gonna get you moving for that day. 10 minutes is much better than zero minutes. If you're just exercising 10 minutes a day, you're doing much more than the vast majority of the population. So your fitness is going to be better than the vast majority of the population. So don't think that exercise has to be a specified amount of time. Just doing something is gonna be useful. Just when you go for a walk, taking a brisker walk, or you know, actually trying to break sweat when you're moving, when you're taking the kids out, try to actually be more active when you're playing with them. Anything to do is gonna be a great um, opportunity to get fit to train. So I don't think time and cost are valid reasons because I think everyone can put 10 minutes aside in their day to exercise if that's all you have. That's the first thing. Second thing is, uh, or another excuse I'd say, the third excuse let's say, would be tiredness. Tiredness is an excuse I hear a lot and from a lot of people it's, they've had a busy day at work and um, they've stressed out at work for a bad day so they just want to go home and veg out on the sofa. And I understand that some people do have physical jobs. Obviously, if you're working in a, in a trade or you know, you're on your feet all day or um, anything like that, where you are physically active, then yes, it may well be that you are tired and physically tired and maybe you will benefit from a rest. But with the majority of people nowadays working in a desk-based environment, office-based environment, that tired, that mental fatigue is not the same as a physical fatigue. It's almost a lethargy, I would say, a, um, a feeling of just being worn down because you haven't really moved. If you actually think about what you've done physically in that day, often it's not very much. You know, if you've sat at your desk, you may have walked to a meeting or you know, may have commuted to work, but often you haven't done a lot physically and the act of actually getting up and moving will re-energize you for that day 
will mean that at least your body has done something that day other than sit and look at a screen or sit in meetings, eating biscuits, um, getting stressed out, which obviously uh, if you're working in, in a high pressure environment, you need to be able to relieve that stress and you need the, um, the benefits of exercise to help that. So I think again, look at whether you are just mentally tired from having a draining day or actually physically you've done something that, that's gonna cause your body to need to rest. And a lot of the time, um, we can be a lot more active than we think we can be. And once you actually get, I think often the hardest part of every workout is that getting from the office to the gym or to wherever you're gonna exercise or getting off the sofa and actually getting moving. And even if you're working at home, just actually turning the television off and getting out and training is the hardest move of that workout. Once you actually start, often that part although there may be elements that feel tiring the actual hard part is getting out and doing it so again look at your yourself and think am i just lethargic from having a day where i've just been sat and brainwashed in the computer and the worst thing you can do after you've had a stressful day looking at a screen all day and, and, and dealing with difficult people is to just go and sit in front of another screen in a different environment, your home environment, and just chill out and just um, basically veg out because that's not healthy and you've got to think of the long-term consequences to your body if that's what you're gonna do six months time, four months time, and not just your physical health, but also your mental health in that you're, you're basically just vegetating, vegetating in, in, in yourself. So really look at that um, as to you know, how you're going to, be in in a year's time if that's what you're going to do every single night and even if you don't necessarily take a moment to think of your health and, and it doesn't have to be uh, if you are tired and if you are physically tired even a way of improving your health and maybe a workout is not the right word for it but meditation or just some nice easy stretching just moving out of a seated position you know lying and just um, taking some time for yourself to to chill out to to um, re-energize yourself, doing anything that is not sitting down is going to be of benefit. And doing anything that's not looking at a screen, taking a break from that screen time, putting your phone aside, is going to be of massive benefit. So I know we talk about exercise, but let's say let's let's divide that and say it doesn't have to be a a workout, but it can just be a healthy practice for your physical health. So you don't have to do something that's going to stress you out. Um, physically, it could just be something that's gonna reinvigorate you physically. So don't necessarily think, okay, I need to do something for my health, therefore I have to get on a treadmill, which I would never recommend anyway, but that's not the case. So think about what are you gonna do each day for your physical health? Injury is a big one. Injury is a big one. Um, it's a difficult one because obviously, I'm not encouraging people to train on an injury. I'm not trying to encourage people to sort of train when they should be resting that body part. So you may have some injury, you may have a, a lower limb injury, a knee injury or something like that, or a shoulder injury. That's no excuse not to train. In, in what we do in our CrossFit classes and what I would do in a personal training session is I would always modify what we do so that it fit yourself. So it would modify your session. If it's a group, it would give you something specific to do. Uh, if it's personal training, obviously we can be specific on that. and get you doing something moving that would not aggravate the injury and hopefully would maybe help to alleviate the injury if that's going to be possible, if that's something we can do possibly. If it's just moving through pain, it may just be we need to um, avoid that joint, but it doesn't really make an excuse as to um, how you're gonna train, uh, sorry, whether you're going to train or not. You just need to find a way around an injury and there's always something you can do, whether that's a back injury, knee injury, shoulder injury, there's always something you can do, you can move. It doesn't have to be at high intensity again, like I said before, but you can always do something if you're injured that's going to help your physical well-being, whatever the state of the injury is. Okay, there's always something. There's, there's people you know, that have serious injuries, but they can still do some physical movement that's gonna help with their health in the long term. And whether that's unloaded movements, whether that's mobility work, or just training around a joint doesn't really matter but there's always a way and you need to find if you're not sure and if you haven't got um, a very good physio if you've got an injury in the physio and it hasn't really helped you that much 
then there's a fitness professional that will be willing to help you. And if it's a long-term problem where you're not going to use that limb for a long time, then you definitely need to find some ways around it because there's no physical benefit to staying off your feet for six months just because you've got um, I don't know, a broken ankle or something like that. It just, you know, get up and move. I, I, you know, I broke my ankle a couple of times and I was up and moving the next day just doing something. And I know that broken ankle is not the most serious of injuries, um, but uh, I've seen people with ACL injuries still training, um, back problems still training. And it's just, you need to find what you can do that doesn't aggravate the pain and hopefully will alleviate the pain and put you in a better position so that when you come out of that injury, you are in a better place than you were going into it. So it's not wasted time when you're injured. You've trained other areas, you've improved the parts of your, of your body you can do, you've improved your weaknesses in those areas. So don't let injury ever be an excuse for not getting in and training. That is, that is an excuse and I don't like people um, not coming in because they have an injury. I know sometimes you may be just in too much pain um, and that's understandable, but if you can get, get up and moving, it's gonna be much better again and we're not gonna be benefiting from sitting down or just lying down all day long. So injury is everything. The final thing is um, illness. You have to differentiate between are you ill or are you just basically skiving. Um, if you're, if you're um, well enough to sort of walk around, um, then you can always do something physical again rather than just lying on your back. Now, if you've got flu and you just cannot move, you've got no energy, then that's not a reason. But if you've got the sniffles, a little cough, or something else, something else pathetic, which sometimes people cancel their sessions on when they've got pathetic illnesses, um, that is definitely not an excuse. And um, shame on you if you are not training because you feel a little bit under the weather. Okay, sometimes again, training is going to make you feel better. It's going to invigorate you. So don't let that be an excuse. I really, no excuses. And finally, if you find that you are better at making excuses than you are actually training, and um, a lot of people, I'd say probably the majority of the population are better at making excuses to why they don't train than to actually training, then you need to look at setting yourself some goals to motivate you. And it doesn't need to be body composition goals. It doesn't need to be, I need to lose five pounds or whatever else crap. Um, but you need to find something that you enjoy that, I personally think anything that you find um, you enjoy is great. For a lot of people, you need to find something where you can actually measure your progress rather than just anecdotally saying you're, you're feeling fitter or, or, um, or, or whatever. So I think you need to find some areas where you can actually have some measurable targets. So, you know, obviously I'm gonna talk about the benefits of training and, and strength training and CrossFit because we have lots of measurable targets in terms of like strength, in terms of skills that you can learn, in terms of um, workouts that we time, so you're trying to improve on your time or your movements in those workouts, trying to improve the, the load or the, the, the difficulty of that. So there's always areas, and that's where I think we, we do really well in terms of motivating people is that there's always areas you can improve so you don't just feel like, okay, I'm just going to the gym to do a workout. Um, and if you miss it, you don't notice, you, you're actually going to the gym and you're, you're, you're logging your time, you're logging your score, you're tracking your weights, and you're trying to see if you can get better each time, you're trying to learn new skills and um, that's really uh, a motivational. And if you find something else that, that you can do that with, and you know, like a martial art where you're going to measure whether you're, you know, going up in a bell or anything else where you're going to be graded in that way, that's a good way to go. Um, if you're just training and you just find something that's really fun and you can do that um, forever, and you don't need that. That's great. But I think for a lot of people, you need something that other than um, just I want to feel healthier to have a goal to motivate you to get to the gym. If you're just like turning up and going because you think you should go. Um, it's going to be very difficult to maintain that level of motivation going forward. If you, you know, you could always find an excuse not to train, as we talked about earlier. There's, there's a million excuses you can make. So you have to look at um, the reasons why you want to train and, and why you want to do these things and what you're trying to achieve and what are you training for, why are you getting fitter, you're getting fitter because um, you're having kids and you, you want to be healthy when they're at a long age or grandkids even. Um, are you getting fitter because you're, you're afraid of you know, what you'll be like in a few years' time? You're just trying to get look better what motivates you work again I, I always think it's great to work with someone to sort of talk about that and try and establish what's going to motivate you because you know just the feeling you need to get fitter is only going to be last so long if you've got some targets it's going to really help you to stop making those excuses because um if you're better at making excuses than you are at training you're never going to get better 
hope that's helped guys i've just wanted to sort of vent for some of my opinions on on that and if you do struggle to get motivated to come to the gym or if you do sort of find a million excuses not to train then please uh put me some comments or drop me a message and i'll try and help and and, and see what we can do to help get you onto that health and fitness wagon um and get you hopefully to a to a fitter version of yourself thanks guys